What's up you guys, it's Holly. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome to the first video. Hope you find something on this channel that works for you. And if you guys like what you see here today, please subscribe to the channel, it would really help me out. Today's video comes highly requested. You guys have asked me a lot over the last few weeks about my summer running gear setup. So what I wear, everything I use to stay hydrated, how I stay safe on the trails and on the road, how I track my runs, every little detail I'm gonna cover. There's actually quite a bit of gear. You might not need all of it, but whether you're a beginner or advanced runner, something in here will probably be new information for you. I will link everything I talk about today down below, and I'm gonna to try to describe everything very quickly on each piece so I don't dwell on anything too long. Let's jump right in. Now, this is obviously not specific to summer, but you guys have asked enough about watches. I'm gonna show you the two that I've used most. First is gonna be the Garmin Phoenix 5S Plus. This one is pretty popular. Um, I think the price has come down since I bought it. I bought mine about two and a half years ago, uh, but it is on the pricier side, uh, especially in the Garmin family. I've really liked this watch. I will say that I changed watches from it because the battery life wasn't good enough for my longer, longer runs being the 100 miler. I wanted to have one watch for that whole race and not have to charge it in between. So I think this gives you 11 hours um, charge with using GPS, obviously a few days worth of charge if you're not using GPS that whole time. So I do like this one. There are a lot of different features. I do know people love the Garmin for things besides running, golf, swimming, cycling, everything's pretty accurate here. The technology is good. The interface is pretty easy to use. Now what I ended up upgrading, upgrading my head to was the Koros Apex. Now I just went with the basic. I didn't go with the Apex Pro. Um, this watch I've used to death and I love it. It is a third of the price of what I paid for that Garmin Phoenix. And the battery lasted, I think, 36 hours with GPS. So a lot longer, I think 36, maybe 32, um, with GPS. And so I knew that for that 100 miler it was gonna last. It absolutely did. And I still had percentage left in the tank when I finished the race. I have had no problems with this watch. It's simpler than the Garmin, I'll say. It has certain GPS features. I haven't quite played with everything. I'm not super, super into stats. If you guys have watched my other videos, you know that. But I feel like the best watch for me right now is the Koros Apex. Again, linking both below. All right, next we're gonna hit some of the sun protection stuff. So hat and sunglasses. I'm not a huge hat person, especially when I run. I feel like it kind of traps heat and it's just not as comfortable to me, but you can't ignore the sun, and if I'm out there for a few hours, I know especially on the trail, and the sun is just beating down on me, it tends to come through the sunglasses, and I really do need that extra blocking. So I love this hat from Lululemon. Again, I'll link it below. Um, I like it because it's almost like a neoprene or like swimsuit material. So I sweat and get cooled off right through it. I feel like it doesn't need to get soaked to then get rid of the heat the way that a cotton hat might. Um, that's just my personal opinion on this. I just love this one for that. I feel like it really breathes easily. Again, big space for the ponytail. It fits nice and loose if you need it to. I have a rather large head. And the bill is a good size to keep you completely protected from the sun. It also curves down a bit to really get that side angle. If you've ever done a race where you're running in one direction for a while and you just keep having that come in, perfect for that. Next up, sunglasses. So I have two pairs I go between. The first, some would argue I look a little nerdy in them, but I don't care. Um, these are just some basic Oakleys. I got these a long time ago, probably eight or more years ago uh, for a long hike I did. They are great because they're super, super dark and I have really light eyes and I'm incredibly sensitive to the sun. These are amazing to know that I'm never ever gonna feel sensitive to the sun. I think they almost might even be for like swimming or underwater or something too. They stay really tight to my head. Nice uh, grip on the side here, pretty wide fit and they don't bounce or move at all. They're very lightweight. That being said, if I'm on the trail and it's super shaded, I do feel these get too uh, dark. So sometimes I'll have to put them up and I can't just leave them normal. But if I'm on the roads, these are great. Um, I have used these for so, so long, no issues. Other pair I actually just got a couple months ago. Um, this brand is by REI. It's called pa uh, Paso Robles maybe? I'm not sure, I'm gonna let you guys know in the link. 25 bucks, REI. They're basically supposed to be like REI's version of Gooder. If you guys run in any Gooder sunglasses, um, there's a really cheap price point for a good running glass that's polarized. This is kind of just every you know active sunglass. It doesn't have to be for running, but these really stay put. They don't move around and they're very lightweight. So I've had really good luck with these. Again, polarized, they feel dark enough and protective enough. Um, 
and they're just really easy to throw around. If I were to lose these, it's not a huge deal because they're so cheap. A couple other items around sun protection and protection from the elements. First up being this Elta MD. It is a facial sunscreen SPF 46. Love this stuff. I've used it for many years and I have a lot of friends who have too. It does not burn when it gets in your eyes, if it gets in your eyes. It stays put. I feel like I've never really had a burned face. Um, I've worn this, you know, one application for a six to eight hour race outside and I've been fine. Uh, so highly recommend getting this. You can get it on Amazon, link down below. As far as, you know, body sunscreen, I just use normal copper tone or whatever. Highly recommend doing your sunscreen before getting dressed for your run if you can help it. That way, if you've got straps or, you know, your packs going on and all this stuff, you don't miss any areas. It's just, if you're gonna be out there for a while, it's just a good layer of protection to do everything before you even get dressed. Make sure you lay a towel down, especially, especially if you're doing like the spray kind. For bug protection, I'm out here in Tennessee, so a lot in the woods and stuff. There's a lot of gnats, mosquitoes, all that kind of stuff. I buy these little bug spray um, or bug repellent bracelets. Great to just put on each wrist. You can even put one on each ankle if you want. Kind of those exposed areas, especially if you're out in the woods, just helps kind of keep the bugs away. I've had a lot of luck with these, especially around water. Um, if you don't deal with bugs, you're out in beautiful California, good for you. All right guys, next up we're talking about chafing. Summer is a very sweaty time for all of us and we've got a lot more exposed skin typically, which gives us more opportunity for areas to get uncomfortable, rubbing, redness, and all that stuff. So the better plan you have going into your summer running season, the better off you're gonna be. Don't wait until you've got awful heel blisters or chafing under your arm or somewhere else where you're just not feeling good because it's gonna keep you from being able to get back out there. Favorite product for this, chamois butter. This stuff's awesome. I buy it in I think a two pack of these big tubes on Amazon. They last a really long time. It pretty much goes on like lotion. I like to do it under here. I like to do it on the arches of my feet. Um, between my legs is usually not an issue. I'll get to my clothing later, but I typically like to always have fabric between my inner thighs. Um, but if you are running in super short shorts, this is great for that. Um, anywhere else that you know you rub. Some people run up here if they have their running pack over top of their tank top, uh, sports bra, what have you. So this is a great product. It's a thick enough barrier that I found it to really work even through the sweatiest of times. All right, let's talk about music and podcasts if you're someone who uses headphones on your run. I switch back and forth between two pairs, my AirPods and my corded headphones. And I will say during the summer months, these are just such a godsend because when something slips out, usually due to sweat or sunscreen or oil or anything, I know where they are. I don't have to go running through the street or the trail to find the AirPod that ejected itself from my ear. So I really still love a corded headphone. These just have that attachment that come with our phones to go in the bottom of the iPhone if you have one, you know, just cheap corded headphones. They do the job for me. AirPods, I'm sure you guys all have these or know about them at this point. I also have an off-brand uh, pair as well. I love these for maybe a cooler run, so tonight I'm gonna run more at sunset time. I'll probably use these, better sound quality, um, and I don't have to worry as much about them slipping out. So I go back and forth between these. Obviously consider if you're doing anything cordless, does it have the battery life you need for the time you're out there? And on the safety side of things, of course, be safe when you have the distractions in your ears. If you're on the trail, you're on single track, really important that you can hear other people behind you and that you don't get spooked by anything. I've had a lot of experiences where I was trying to pass someone or someone was trying to pass me and we just didn't hear each other and it turned into a way bigger deal than it needed to be. So know what's going on around you, especially on the roads as well. Cars, traffic, other runners, you wanna make sure you are aware of your surroundings, especially if you're running in the darkness at all. Won't really expand beyond that, but if you do have you know, your headphones in at all, just keep that volume down or one out. They also make great bone conduction headphones now as well, which don't have to sit in your ears. You can kind of hear it outside of your usual hearing. All right guys, let's talk hydration. This is so important for summer. I don't care if you're a brand new runner and you're going out for 20 minutes, you would rather be over-prepared than under-prepared when it comes to heat. If you've ever been stranded out there, sun beating down, you've run out of water, you really don't know where your next rest area is gonna be or when you'll be back at the car, this is just such an important one to have handled before you head out. So here's two main things that I use during the summer. If I am going out for an hour or less, I take my handheld water bottle. Slips right in the hand here. This is by Amphipod, again on Amazon, super easy, and it has a little zipper pouch right here. 
Super easy, you can keep a gel in there, um, you know, bite of food, electrolyte, car key, whatever you need. And you do not even have to grip this at all. It just stays, stays right with you when you run. Very easy mouthpiece as well. It pulls out and you just bite it to suck. If my run is over an hour, without fail, I am taking my hydration vest with me. I have been a longtime fan of Ultimate Direction out of Colorado, I believe. Great company. I've used two different uh, types of vests from them. This is the race vest, I think it's called. Super lightweight, without water in it. It feels like it weighs nothing. Inside of it, I have my one and a half liter bladder mixed with two of the soft flasks, and those sit kind of right in the front on the pockets here. There's also little um, zipper pockets and little areas that you can just shove gels, you know, all kinds of stuff for longer races. I won't get too much into that today, but this is a great vest for that. They have a lot of different versions, and I think there are other brands, of course, that make great uh, hydration vests. I'm just speaking to what I've used and what I'm used to. Make sure that whatever you get is adjustable enough to your chest size. I know that some men have trouble finding vests that fit um, the width of their chest. So really be clear about that. Some companies make custom um, vests for you as well. So there's all different ways to do that. Big tube goes from the bladder, of course. It has a lock protection on it, and then you just bite and it goes through a um, little strap on the vest. You literally don't have to move with this. You can just be drinking water, running. Don't even have to stop. Also, of course, we've got that storage in there as well. So over an hour in the summer, again, I'm in Tennessee. I've got this guy with me. Under an hour, I've got my handheld. Now, when it comes to the heat and excessive sweating, we can't do it with water alone. Especially if you're out there for over an hour, you're going to need to be keeping track of your electrolytes. I am a big fan of Element, LMNT. These guys come in these little packets like this. This is the orange salt flavor, which is my favorite, but um, it's got 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium. Way less sugar in it, at least taste-wise, and I believe in the ingredients than the liquid IV. I feel like I get results from liquid IV, but it's so sugary that it's harder for me to get it down. I get kind of that like gel or like syrup taste in my mouth. This stuff is very salty tasting, I will say, um, but the more you dilute it, obviously, the easier it is to get down if you don't like that taste. Great, great uh, product. If you don't want to use a packet, they make this great uh, base electrolyte salt. It comes in a little tube, and I couldn't find mine today to show you guys. Uh, but I will link below, and that is super easy. You just lick your finger, little shake on the tube, lick the salt off, do that every 45 minutes or so, and you're good to go. Biggest thing with electrolytes, you're preventing cramping. Your body is really shedding that fluid. You're really getting the sweating going. You're losing a lot more than you would in a cooler temperature, obviously. So the more you can rebalance yourself on the electrolyte front as you're starting to lose those, the less problems you're gonna have in the heat. So really, again, if I am running for over an hour, I have at least one of those uh, packets with me or already in one of the soft flasks ready to go. Now let's talk about fuel quickly. If you are someone in the ultra running department or you're out on the trails for many hours, you've probably gotten your nutrition handled by now. You know what you like to eat for many hours at a time. If you're out there for over an hour, I really recommend having at least 200 calories with you on hand. Just that extra couple bites, get you through maybe something unexpected in your run, or if you're out there and it's really hot and you need that little boost of energy, this is important to kind of have that cushion. So here's two products I love, the OG Cliff Blocks. These have been around so long, I've always liked them, and I don't have any gut issues from them. They're very sweet, but they get the job done. You pretty much feel results. You feel that spike of energy right away. A lot of people do have gut issues though, and they get that kind of side stitch or cramp from something like that. So this is why I recommend Tailwind, amazing product. This is something you put in water. It's a big powder packet. I believe 200 calories in just one of these packets. You can just drink this with your water and you're getting those calories in. You don't have to think about chewing or swallowing anything. Very, very easy way to get those calories in. They make some with caffeine and some without. All right, guys, last piece of gear before we move to clothing. This is my favorite recovery tool. If you've watched my other videos, you know how much I love this thing. This is the Supernova by Mobility Wad, the Ready State. It is a larger uh, recovery ball, and it's very hard, and it's big enough that you can use both as kind of a foam roller and then a targeted self-massage tool. So I really like traveling with this thing. I can't recommend it enough. There's so many ways to use it, and right here I'll link a video where I kind of go in depth of how I use all my recovery tools. 
So highly recommend picking one of these up, especially if you're gonna be kind of all around, wanna get a quick little cool down or stretch once you get done with a trail run or done with a long road run before even getting in the car. This thing's so awesome. Um, even just sitting on it on a bench or a couch with it under your hamstring is just a great way to recover. Great for the calves as well. All right, moving along into what I wear. Starting with my shoes, again, if you are a loyal follower of mine, you know I only pretty much run in the Hoka Speed Goat 4s. And you can see there's, these are getting quite worn down. These are awesome hybrid shoes. I love them for road and trail. That's what sold me on them. They're pretty lightweight, nice and cushioned, so I can go short, I can go long. Probably wouldn't use them on like a track workout because they're kind of clunky but I feel super gripped on the trails. I feel super cushioned on the roads in those. I have been in these for years and years. Links down below. Highly recommend these, especially for people with a wider foot. All right, guys, next we're talking about socks. Don't neglect those feet when you're thinking about where you're gonna be sweating and creating blisters this summer. It's really important to protect those feet. They are technically your vehicles for any run you're gonna be doing, right? So you wanna make sure you're really well prepared. Highly recommend anything with merino wool. Merino wool is an incredible fabric for wicking that sweat away from the skin. Feet get sweaty, it pulls the sweat through the fabric, it sits it outside of the fabric, keeping your foot dry. Same goes for any clothing with merino wool. It's incredibly regulating for temperature, keeping you either cooler or hotter, depending on the atmosphere or terrain you're on. So really recommend, these are the darn tough socks. These are more of a trail sock, they're thicker. I have some by Smart Wool. Um, Amazon has its own brand. There's so many different uh, uh, merino wool socks you can get. I like these too if they go up higher on the ankle, if I'm trying to protect against bug bites or poison ivy or something if I'm on the trails. Other socks I love, in Gingy. These guys are known for their toe socks. Really good to keep those toes separate, of course, so they don't rub against each other with that added sweat, blister city. So highly recommend a toe sock. Again, in Gingy makes all types all the way up the, the leg down at the ankle, whatever you may need. I believe these have merino wool in them as well. You can also tape your feet. I'm not getting into that in this video. It's too complicated, uh, especially if you're more of a beginner runner, you don't need that. But in other videos, I do cover how I tape my feet, especially my 100 miler that I did. So I'll make sure that's linked below for you guys, the tape that I use. But toe socks, chamois butter, merino wool, you are good to go. Lastly, for a basic workout sock, I've used Bombas for a while now. Love them, um, super lightweight. I just get the ankle sock. They come in like a pack of 12. They're very good for like anti-stink, uh, keeping you pretty solid in your shoe. They don't really slide around. The only thing I'll say is after many times drying them, you probably shouldn't be drying them, but if you do, they get a little dry rotted and I feel like they don't fit as snug. So those are kind of the three main things I rotate between anything longer than an hour. I'm definitely not gonna be in this. I'm gonna be in one of these guys to feel really protected in my shoe. Finally, I'm gonna cover my favorite running outfits for summer. These are my absolute staples. I rotate between these few styles of clothing and I swear by them. I've done tons of races in the heat, tons in the desert and the sand, and I really know that these work. And if you're a guy watching this, just send this video over to a girl in your life who runs. This will be very valuable to her probably. First, we're starting with my two favorite pairs of leggings. I am someone who, even in 100 degree heat, prefers leggings over shorts. I don't like the feeling of my legs sweating and touching each other. That might be a personal preference. I also just like that these days, leggings are so well made. They wick away sweat, they dry very easily, and they have pockets so you can just stick your phone in there. So all around, I just am more comfortable in a legging. First up is the Lululemon Fast and Free. This is the 7 8 length. I am about 5'4" to give you an idea, and these hit just a couple inches above my ankle where my sock is with my shoe. So especially out on the trails, these are pretty much full coverage, uh, which is great if I'm protecting against bug bites, again, poison ivy, uh, branches scratching me, that kind of thing. These are great leggings. My only complaint with them, for me personally, is that the pelvis is a little bit shorter, the inseam is a little less comfortable than another pair that I like. So I do love how high-waisted they are. I love that they don't move at all. From the second you start your run, they do not move. I also recommend sizing down one on these just to make sure they're really set in place. And down the leg, they're very comfortable. Two big pockets on each side, a couple pockets in the back. These are, these are awesome leggings. Um, they do even have an adjustable strap here on the front. So this is the Fast and Free from Lululemon. Second pair, and these I literally run in 
I have so many pairs of them. They are my absolute staple favorite. They have lasted me through so many races and different long runs. This is the All the Right Places Crop 2. This is a little bit shorter than that Fast and Free I just showed you. Same thing though, two pockets each side. The only difference is there's no seam right here in the middle. More comfortable for me, but they don't really stick to you until you're sweating, if that makes sense. So the first you know, three to five minutes, you might feel a little sliding down, but as soon as you start to sweat, they stick to you. Nice high waist here. Again, you got a pocket in the back for a key or credit card, anything like that. Um, they wick you know, just as well as the Fast and Free. Sometimes these are a little bit lighter weight, the Fast and Free are, but both are great options. I swear by these leggings. I know so many runners who swear by these leggings. All right, so if I'm not in leggings and I do decide to wear shorts, usually it's gonna be a run under 90 minutes. I will go with the tracker short or these Athleta shorts. These are the stashers. I'll show those in a second. Tracker shorts are awesome. I've worn these for so many years just for leisure, but also for running. They really stay in place. They're not as high-waisted as one might like, but they stay put. And they have the built-in underwear, which is great. I feel that's nice and comfortable and breezy. Some people don't like that. And they've got a little zipper pocket here to throw your key or card in. Now, you're not gonna have your phone held anywhere in here. You're gonna have to hold that in your hand, which is one downside, uh, but these are just great running shorts to have. They last forever. Second pair. This is the Athleta Stasher Short. Now, these are the seven inch inseam, I believe. These are great. They've got a pocket on each side of the short, pocket in the back in the waistband as well. Very nice and high rise, good fit all around, and they're long enough, as you can see, for your legs to not touch in the middle. So they look a little weirder. They look more like a bike short or something like that, but these are awesome, and I know my phone will fit, so if it is really hot, I'll wear these, and they're kind of a nice alternative to the leggings. Um, they're also more affordable than the Lululemons. So linking both of these down below, but if I am in shorts, it's gonna be one of these pairs. All right, moving up to the top half. These are my two go-to sports bras. Again, used them for many years, many races in them. I swear by this style. I've got the energy bra here from Lululemon. Crosses in the back, has that thinner band around the ribs. And then I've got the energy bra like I just showed you, but it's the long line version. So a wider strap to go around the rib cage, otherwise the back looks the exact same. The reason I love these bras so much, they fit really snug really well, giving you enough space in the straps. You don't feel too constricted, but you feel like you've got support. I'm not super large chested, so if you are, really make sure you try this one out before purchasing it. Um, you can always run in place, you can always try something at Lulu and bring it back, but really important to know what type of bra works for you best. These I find to just be really, really good at wicking away sweat, holding me and making me feel comfortable. And over time, over wa many washes, I don't feel like they get too stretched out. So highly recommend trying one of these out. I'll link below. I will say the long line is more comfortable around the rib cage. All right, guys, and finishing here with my favorite running tops. This part's really important. I switch between tanks and cap sleeves in the summer. Favorite tank is gonna be, first, the Lululemon Swiftly tank. This one I've had for so long. Again, these last so long. Uh, they have this silver thread in them that help with anti-stink. When you're sweating a lot, they don't smell bad after many hours of running, which is awesome. They wash really well, they air dry really quickly. I get these because they go down to the waist. They're not cropped. They do make a cropped version, um, but I like just the fuller lengths. So they don't roll up and get uncomfortable, kind of just like showing your stomach if you don't want that. Other tank I love by Lululemon is the Train to Bee tank. I sort of have something similar on right now, but this is a little bit more of a cropped style, a little boxier, but it's looser. It hangs straight down, super, super breathable. Lots of holes back here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I love this. It's obviously not gonna roll up because it just hangs loose. So I do like the comfort and feeling of this. I also like that the armpit goes up higher. Some people really like a long open hole here, not for me. Um, so I really enjoy this tank top for that. I size normal in the loose one, so in that train to B, I'll wear a six, and then I size down on the Swiftly, I wear a four here. Um, if I didn't already mention in the leggings, I always go down to a four for those, so they fit more snug. Normally, I'm a six in pants. All right, moving to the cap sleeve. This is random. I got this sent in a PR thing when I uh, worked for the run experience, but I got this Under Armour. It's like their heat technology fabric. This is just a normal cap sleeve black t-shirt with a little um, 
I don't know, just a breathable panel kind of in the back, super thin. Goes nice and long to the hips here, super easy and loose. Amazing at uh, wicking away sweat and just keeping you cool. Even though this is black, this is incredibly good technology at keeping you cool in the summer. So if I can find the link to at least this fabric, I will, but I got it many years ago, but I love it. Other one is again, Lululemon. This is the Swiftly cap sleeve. And again, this is a bit of a looser fit. It's, it's just tight enough. Similar back to that train to be, it has um, more holes to breathe in it like this, more like netting. And, and then I do have a couple tighter versions as well. Um, if I am running for over an hour or over 90 minutes, somewhere in there, I like to be in a cap sleeve shirt. I don't like any rubbing under here. So, and again, if I have my uh, hydration pack, that ultimate direction one with me and it's on, I don't like any rubbing. I want fabric as the barrier. I trust that all this fabric is gonna wick away sweat just fine. So a little more coverage for me isn't a problem. Some people wanna be as cool as possible. They wanna have as little fabric on as possible. That's just not me. I swear by these, I have done really long races, really long runs in these tops, and they are awesome. Little bonus piece of gear just to help inspire you guys to get out there. Nothing better than finishing your hot, sweaty summer run and slipping into something comfortable. These are my two favorite recovery shoes for after a run. I pop those sneakers off, the sweaty socks, and if I'm gonna go get you know, an ice cold Gatorade or something after the run, I wanna be comfortable. So I wear these Birkenstocks. They're just the plastic version. I think they're not even 50 bucks. Drop them below. And the Hoka recovery slides. These are super old, very cushioned, and they just feel really good on my feet. So. Always good to have a pair of shoes to slide into or a pair of flip flops. Just get out of those running clothes, put something loose and comfortable on, go get a cold drink and you know enjoy the fact that you just did something tough. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, got something out of it. Again, everything will be in the description for you so you can buy anything, ask me any questions in the comments and I will see you guys another day. Have a good one. I don't wanna say here, no. Ain't gonna keep it low.